Okay, in our next section here, we need to discuss arcs and sectors. Arcs and sectors are relatively common types of circle questions on this test. Before we get into the formulas and how to actually attack these questions, let's make sure we are all clear on some terminology. So first of all, let's talk about angles with their vertices at the center of a circle. So we're talking about uh, an angle like this angle one here, we call those central angles. So any angle that has its vertex at the center of a circle, we call a central angle. And of course, you can see a central angle sort of makes a little slice out of the pie that is the circle. And that central angle cuts off or captures or intersects a certain portion of the circle's circumference. And we call that part or portion or fraction of the circle's circumference an arc. And this shaded region that the central angle and the two radii that make up the central angle cut off this shaded portion is called a sector. So we have central angle here, we have an arc that is captured by the central angle, and then we have uh, some area that is captured by the central angle, the sector. Uh, by the way, on this test, there is a chance you will see these terms minor arc, major arc. So for instance, if you have a circle and you have two points on that circle, you can see that one arc is the, is the smaller arc here from A to B in that direction. But then you can also go around the circle from A to B in this direction. The larger arc is called the major arc. The shorter arc is called the minor arc. If you do see notation like this on the test, they are always referring to the minor arc. And if they want to refer to a major arc, they will either say major arc, or what they will do is they will put a third point and they will say something like, arc ACB. And what that tells you is that you don't go right from A to B, you go from A to C to B, which means again, you are talking about the major arc there. In terms of how we actually tackle arc and sector questions, we really just need to memorize these formulas. But just to give you a little bit of explanation, not going to go into a ton of detail here. But you should just know that when it comes to arcs and sectors, everything is dependent on the central angle measure. So for instance, if your central angle measure is let's say 90 degrees, just keep it simple here, you should be able to see it should be very clear that you are capturing one fourth of both the circumference. So this arc would be one fourth of the circumference. And this area, this sector area would be one fourth of the total area. Well, if you think about that fraction one fourth, that is the same as 90 out of 360. In other words, it is your central angle measure, 90 degrees in this case, out of your total central angle, we know we have total, a total of 360 degrees in the central angle. So the central angle measure out of 360 governs that fraction uh, reduced here to one fourth governs how much of the circumference is captured and how much of the area is captured. So occasionally you may hear me say cam over 360. And what that means is central angle measures cam stands for central angle measure over 360. That is the key ratio in arc and sector questions. So the formulas that you should memorize are as follows. If you want to determine arc length, what you would do is you would do your central angle measure. So that's in this case, x, x degrees, I'm going to write down cam over 360. And you would multiply cam over 360, the central angle measure over 360 by your circumference 2 pi r. That is the circumference. And that's it. To find the arc length, you take central angle measure over 360 times the total circumference and you will have your arc length for sector area, very similar. If you want your sector area, you take that central angle measure x again, I'm going to write cam right there central angle measure over the total central angle 360 degrees. And in this case, since you want sector area, you multiply that fraction by the total area pi r squared. Let's see how these formulas will work 
on the next example, example three. If you feel confident about these examples, you can go ahead and try them on your own. Do note that this is a no calculator example, and therefore we're gonna probably have to do some canceling and reducing and so on and so forth. So again, you wanna try example three on your own, pause the video, and then join us when you're done. Example three says that we have a circle with center O, radius R, central angle with degree measure X, we need to determine the following. So in 3a, we are told that the radius equals 9, r equals 9, and x equals 80. Great. And we need the length of arc AB. We need the length of the arc that is captured by the two radii that make up that central angle. So again, we're, we're going to use the formula. We need arc length. So I'm going to write arc length that's going to equal the central angle measure, which is 80 over 360 times 2 pi r. This is an arc length, so we need to use circumference here. 2 pi r would be 18 pi, right? 2 pi r equals 18 pi. r is 9, circumference is 18 pi. So what are we gonna do here? Let's first do some canceling this way, get rid of those zeros probably next thing to do easy to cancel that 36 and that 18 18 goes into both of those numbers so 18 into 18 is 1 18 into 36 is 2 so this all becomes 8 over 2 times 1 pi which is 8 over 2 times pi which is 4 pi so that was fairly simple so that's the arc length this arc from a to b would be 4 pi and that represents 83 sixtieths of the entire circumference whatever 80 over 360 reduces to that's the fraction that arc a b is of the entire circumference in 3 b we are told that the radius is 5 the central angle here is 72 we need the area of the shaded region so this is an area question so we need to find the area of the sector so i'll write sector equals there's the central angle measure over 360 times, in this case we want to use area, the area formula here, pi r squared, we're dealing with area of the shaded region, pi r squared, pi r squared is going to be 25 pi. There are several ways that you could go about reducing stuff here. Probably the easiest way is to just know that 72 is one fifth of 360. That might be a good equivalency to know. If you had to do this another way, um, probably easiest would be to know that 36 goes into both the numerator and the denominator here. 36 goes into 72 twice. 36 goes into 360 10 times. Uh, so that's 2 tenths times 25 pi. And indeed, 2 tenths, as I mentioned before, is going to reduce to 1 fifth. So this is 1 fifth of 25 pi. Everybody should know that 1 fifth of 25 is 5. So we have... 5 pi here. In example 3c, we are told that the length of the bolded arc AB is pi, r equals 8. We need the value of x. So notice here, we're actually trying to find a different part of the equations in this case. In examples 3a and 3b, we were actually trying to find the arc length or the sector area. So all the stuff to the right of the equal sign was given and the thing to the left was the unknown. But in this case, we actually are given the length of the arc. They tell us that the arc length is pi. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that pi on the left for arc length, so that's the arc length. And everything else is gonna stay the same except that my unknown is going to be up there in the numerator of that cam over 360, that central angle measure over 360 fraction. So I'm going to use two pi r here. I'm gonna use the circumference because we are talking about arc length. So the circumference in this case, two pi, the radius is eight. So that is 16 pi, so 16 pi. Now in terms of how to go about cleaning this up and solving for x, um, I don't know, we could cancel the pi's first, we could start uh, canceling 360 and 16. What am I gonna do here? I'm going to treat this as if it were just a cross multiplication opportunity. So I'm going to do this. So I'm just going to combine the 16 pi and the x in the numerator there. 
and I'm going to put pi on the left over 1, and then I'm going to cross multiply. I'm going to get 360 pi equals 16 pi x. I'm not sure that that was the most efficient way to do this, but so now I'm dividing by 16, getting rid of the 16 there. So I'm going to get x equals 360 over 16, and breaking this down, I'm sure 16 goes into 360 probably evenly, but I'm going to just do this by twos. I'm going to do 180 over 8, then 90 over 4, then 45 over 2. Uh, and by the way, that is a perfectly fine way to reduce fractions. Just keep dividing by a small factor like 2 or 3 if necessary. So yeah, there were a couple of steps here to get to the 45 over 2, but eventually you're going to get there. 45 over 2, we could either just uh, write 45 over 2 degrees, uh, but 45 over 2, of course, so 45 over 2 degrees. Uh, 45 over 2, of course, is equal to 22.5. So 22.5 degrees would be the central angle if our circumference were 16 pi and our arc length were pi, um, we would have a central angle of 22.5 degrees. 22.5 degrees, by the way, would represent 1 16th of the central angle. So actually I was wrong that 16 goes into 360 evenly. It does not. Anyway, that is it for the basic arc and sector uh, questions. We do need to talk about a less absolute or less concrete type of question where instead of being given specific values for the central angle or the arc or the sector uh, and needing to find you know some other specific value, some of these questions will simply involve the relationship between all of the various parts and holes. So for instance, in this info box here, we have arc length out of 2 pi r, central angle out of 360, sector area out of pi r squared. All of these relationships are equal. So for instance, if we were told that the, just as a side example here, that the sector area is, I don't know, let's say uh, 3 eighths of the area of the circle, So what that would mean is that the sector area, the ratio of the sector area is 3 eighths to 1 sector area, whole circle, 1 represents the whole circle. And of course, 3 eighths over 1 is just 3 eighths. So that 3 eighths would establish that not only is the sector area 3 out of 8 of the whole area, it also means that the central angle would be 3 out of 8 of the 360. It also means the arc length would be 3 out of 8 of the entire circumference. In other words, if we knew that this fraction over here were 3 eighths, we would know that this fraction would have to equal 3 eighths, and this fraction over here would have to be equal to 3 eighths. And a lot of these questions, again, will not involve concrete numbers in all of the positions of the formulas that we just learned. They will just involve relative numbers. Let's take a look at example four. Pause the video if you want to try it on your own. Point A is the center of the circle above. The area of the shaded region is what fraction of the area of the circle? So shaded region, what fraction area of the circle? So we are given one piece of concrete information here, and that is the central angle measure, that 140. Well, remember, we know that 140 out of 360 has to also equal the fraction of the total circumference that this arc is and the fraction of the circle's total area that this sector area is. So if I find what 140 out of 360 is, I will also have the fraction of the total area that the sector or shaded region makes up. So 140 out of 360, I'm going to cancel the zeros. Um, I'm going to do the division by 2 here. So 14 divided by 2 is 7. 36 divided by 2 is 18. That cannot be reduced any further. 7 and 18 do not have any common factors. So what I have just found is that because the central angle measure out of the total central angle is 7 out of 18, that also means that the arc out of the total circumference 
and the sector out of the total area also have to equal that fraction, which means that the sector area here must be 7 eighteenths of the entire area. My answer is 7 eighteenths. So again, the shaded region must be 7 eighteenths of the total area of this circle because that is the fraction that the central angle measure over the total central angle equals. In example five, again, pause the video if you would like to try this on your own. In the circle above, point O is the center of the circle and the length of major arc ABC, ABC, okay, is 7 twelfths of the circumference of the circle. What is the value of X, value of X? So we know that arc ABC, this big major arc out here, is 7 twelfths of the circle. And therefore, probably the easiest way to do this is to understand that that means that arc AC, the smaller arc, is 5 twelfths of the circle. 7 twelfths in one arc, 5 twelfths in the other arc makes 12 twelfths. So really all I'm doing is I'm subtracting 7 twelfths from 1 to get 5 twelfths. So I now know that arc AC is 5 twelfths of the circle. So what I'm going to do in this case, I'm going to set up a proportion. I know that my arc length out of the total circumference is 5 twelfths. And that has to be equal to the central angle measure over 360. Again, that just comes from the equivalencies that we saw at the top of the page. Arc length out of circumference is 5 out of 12, and that must be equal to central angle measure out of 360. So in this case, I am going to, what am I going to do? I'm going to cross multiply, but I'm going to do it like this. So that's 12x, and I'm going to keep the 360 times 5 here. And the reason I'm doing that is because when I divide by 12, I want to keep that 12 under that 360 uh, because 12 into 360 is 30, right? 36 divided by 12 is 3. And then there's the 0. So I'm going to add the 0 in there. So that's going to be 30 times 5, which is 150. So that central angle, which is what they ask us for, should be 150 degrees, 150 degrees. And again, we could check, we could do 150 out of 360. Those two cancel. Three goes into both the numerator and denominator, goes into the numerator five times, into the denominator 12 times, five twelfths. And indeed, that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted the arc AC to be five twelfths of the circumference. And indeed, arc AC will be five twelfths of the circumference if that central angle measure is 150 because 150 out of 360 is 5 twelfths and therefore 5 twelfths of the circumference will be captured by that central angle. That's pretty much it for arcs and sectors. There are some other formulas that students have memorized involving S's and thetas and all that stuff. If you're comfortable with those formulas, you can continue to use them. Most of the arc and sector questions will be fairly straightforward and probably most easily solved using the formulas that we have discussed here.